Hey folks, welcome to the Enlightenment Hour of Legally Owned America. I am of course Paul Glasgow and we're going to take the time today to go over some details of a recent flurry of bills that have come out by both the Senate and the House. The House themselves have about 11 bills and the Senate came out with about five bills. Again, all of this is triggered off of the emotion that came from the Las Vegas shooting. Um, I always have this saying that it's not a good time to make policy whenever emotions are high. And right now, our government is doing just that. They're trying to make policy while emotions are high to take advantage of that emotion in order to shove some of these bills through that probably shouldn't be pushed through. I've done all the reading, so you guys don't have to. I'm gonna summarize some of these bills now, since these bills are the result of the Las Vegas shooting, I plan to go through these bills and show you which ones of these would or would not have prevented that particular Las Vegas shooting. Let's get right into it. We got a lot to go over. Just so you guys know, I am going to take all of these bills, break them down individually, and post the videos separately so you guys can see them separately. Because if I did all this at once, we'd probably be here for a good hour going over this. And I don't want to bore you that much. So I'll go back and do each individual bill later on. And again, post those videos individually so you can look at the ones you want to look at or share them amongst your friends and family. Okay, I'm going to start from the top. Uh, there's no particular order that these are in other than numerical and how they fall in terms of being posted. H.R. 3947. This is a House bill. These first 11 are going to be House bills. This is very similar to H.R. 3999 that we talked about the other day that is going to pretty much ban anything that's going to increase rate of fire on your particular firearm. Now what I've done is I've taken the liberty, these guys are, are very notorious in the House and in Senate, of naming these bills really attractive and feel good, mushy, cushy kind of uh, uh, phrases that make you feel like, well, of course we should vote for that. What I've done is I've named them what they should be called. This one is called the Semi-Automatic Rifle Abatement Act because eventually this one is going to take away semi-automatic rifles. I will go into that when I break that specific bill down, but that's in essence what HR 3947 does, the same thing that 3999 did. Um, this would not have prevented the Las Vegas shooting. I know what you're thinking. Allegedly, and I say allegedly because it gives the appearance that there was a bump fire stock that increased the rate of fire for the killer. However, number one, there's no proof of that yet because the inv investigation is not complete. Also, it would not have prevented the Las Vegas shooting. If there was no such thing as a bump fire stock, this guy probably would have killed more people because he was a, would have been more accurate with a standard semi-automatic rifle doing what a semi-automatic rifle does when it's in the hands of an evil person that's hell-bent on mass murder. So, with that being said, HR 3947 would absolutely not have prevented this particular occurrence in Las Vegas. H.R. 3962. What I'm going to call this one, uh, let's, let's see what they call it first. Their mushy words are Stop Online Ammunition Sales Act of 2017. That's not too cushy and mushy. Um, you know, that sounds about as bad as what it is, but what I'm going to call it is the Limit Law Abiding Citizens from Lawfully Purchasing Ammo for Completely Innocent Reasons Act. That's what I'm going to call it because that's all it does. It prevents you and I from going online and purchasing any kind of bulk ammunition that we want, and I believe the the magic number that they chose was 1,000. Again, I will go this and go uh, over this in detail when I go over this particular item later on. It's on the individual uh, video. However, this certainly would not have stopped the killer in Las Vegas simply because this guy was going to do what he was going to do anyway, and there is no record of him for some reason going out and buying in, in huge amounts of bulk. All of this ammo that suddenly he used to, to murder all of these people. It does not take a bulk order online to accrue an X amount of um, um, higher amount of rounds in your cachet, as they like to call it. Um, if you walk downstairs in my garage right now, you're going to find well more than probably what this guy had. Um, that just happens to be what my business is and what I do, which therein lies the problem because if it is your business to shoot guns, Who's going to determine that and at what point do I get put on a terror watch list because I have thousands of rounds of ammo in my shop? So again, that would not have prevented the Las Vegas shooting. Absolutely not whatsoever. Again, no proof anyway that he got those rounds online and it doesn't matter anyway because he could have gone down to Walmart and bought the same rounds. That's not going to do anything to prevent uh, any future murders. The next one is HR 3984 and I will post all these in the, uh, the comment section or in the description section rather. 
Okay, they call this one, the House calls it the Equal Access to Justice for Victims of Gun Violence Act. That sounds awesome. That sounds like, wow, when I hear Equal Access to Justice for Victims of Gun Violence Act, I, th I want to grab a teddy bear and just hold it and go, yeah, we should vote for that one. What it really should be called is, Allow Unaccountable Idiots to Sue Gun Companies for No Reasons Act, because that's all it is. And I'm not going to go any further on that because that certainly would not have prevented the killer from doing what he did in Las Vegas. The only way this bill could have prevented what happened in Las Vegas, and I do believe this is what they're after, is if every single gun manufacturer and ammo manufacturer out there were sued and put out of business and nobody else made guns and nobody else made ammo. Now, here's the problem. We've still got all the guns and all the ammo out there. I understand ammo is expendable, but there's millions and millions of rounds in the United States that have not been fired yet, and there are millions of guns out there. So the only way that this bill of suing totally innocent firearms manufacturers and ammo manufacturers, the only way that could have stopped this is if every one of them had already been put out of business and magically all guns and ammo had disappeared. Wouldn't have happened. Doesn't change a thing. The next one, HR 3986. Oh my gosh, these, uh, it, sometimes it's hard for me to read what these guys word. They're citing this act with their uh, cushy wording as Stopping the Iron Pipeline Act of 2017. Now that really sounds nefarious, doesn't it? I call it the put an unnecessary barcode on guns in order to create a national registration database of only law-abiding citizens, because that's what this one does. It does not stop the iron pipeline, which they're talking about the influx of guns into the underground industry or into the gangs and things like that, which is really where they should be looking, but they're not. They're looking at the gun companies and you and I, the innocent people. What basically this bill would do is force all gun manufacturers to start putting, and I, I'm using the term, I'm paraphrasing a barcode on guns because they're talking about some kind of identification as if a serial number is not enough identification. They want some kind of a scannable code or marking on every single handgun out there. And I'm sure this will roll over, obviously, to shotguns and any long guns in general. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to put something, and they want it to be passive. It's not a chip. It's not an electronic thing that's going to send a signal or receive a signal or whatever. It's supposed to be something that's passive. Again, a barcode. That's what they're looking at, or a QR code. So they're wanting to do that. But again, all that does, and you and I both know this, it's a scannable barcode. The barcode, all of your information would go into that barcode once you purchase that firearm. And of course, that creates a registry with your name and all of your information in it. You don't want registration. You don't want HR 3986 because that's what it does. Would that have prevented the Las Vegas shooting? No, sorry, it would not have. What it would have told them if there had been such a bill in existence prior to him purchasing every one of his weapons, when they got in the hotel room, if he didn't have his driver's license on him, they could have scanned the guns and told, told themselves who had the guns. That would not have prevented a thing in the Las Vegas shooting. The next one, H.R. 3987. Okay, what the fluffy name for this act is cited as is Protecting Americans from Gun Violence Act of 2017. Makes me want to roll up in, was it a Snuggie? Makes me want to roll up in a Snuggie is what that does. Get some hot chocolate, maybe some marshmallows in it, turn the fire on and just kind of cuddle up next to it and read the Protecting Americans from Gun Violence Act of 2017. Wow, what I call it is report lost or stolen guns within 48 hours or become a felon and give all your guns up act because that's what it does it does two things actually the first part which they're actually touting it as and they're trying to they, they bury the rest of what i just said into this bill the first part is they charge an extra dollar so far it's a dollar on every single gun purchase again we're paying taxes on these guns why are we paying anything more but anyway, they want us to pay an, an additional dollar tax because it's a tax. They're forcing it. They're making you pay it. The government's going to collect it. It's a tax. They're making you pay that dollar. The gun company or the gun store has to hold that dollar, and then they have to send all of their money in at the end of the month to the Secretary of the Treasury. If you don't do it, you get a $2,500 uh, fine for every single instance. Now, what they're really trying to bury is... Within 48 hours after a person who owns a firearm discovers a thing has been lost or stolen, they have to report it or 
they will become a felon. Because what happens is penalties for failure to report loss or theft of firearms, and I am reading verbatim from here, shall be fined $10,000, imprisoned, not more than one year, or both with respect to each firearm involved in the violation. If you get two firearms stolen out of your vehicle and you do not notice it, or out of your home, wherever, you will be fined $20,000 and given a possibility of two years in prison because somebody stole your guns and you did not report them, according to the government, on time. Hmm, would that have stopped the Las Vegas shooting? Nope, nope. All his guns were purchased legally, none were stolen, none were lost. Even if the guy himself had had lost or stolen guns and not reported them or reported them, wouldn't have stopped this. What does this thing even do? What does it even do? You know, I know we're talking about the gangs in Chicago, but clearly this is not aimed at the gangs in Chicago. It's aimed at us. It's us. We're the ones that become felons. HR 3998. All right. Another really, really sweet sounding name. Protect America Act of 2017. I can just see them when they go, yes, that's a great name. I can just hear them saying that. What it really is. It's called, that. what it should be called is screw due process and prevent innocent law-abiding citizens from buying guns based on unfounded hunches act. That's what it should be called. <clears throat> we have an older video that talks about the terror watch list and a no-fly list being two totally separate lists. And the Democrats have a habit of combining those and saying, ooh, we don't want terrorists owning these guns. But what they're really talking about is the no-fly list. They combine the two and they try to convince you with a low, via a smoke, smoke screen that they're talking about terrorists, but they really are two completely different uh, lists. What I'll do is I'll post the video that we did, this video we did maybe two or three years ago. It's been quite some time now, but they're calling it terrorists because there's a terror watch list, but it's the no-fly list that they're pulling from. The no-fly list has hundreds of thousands of people on it, and I think there's tons of them, like tens of thousands, that are on there incorrectly that do not allow people to... It, it could be you have a similar name to somebody or you accidentally get put on it. Remember James Rosen from Fox News? He was put on it. Um, Ted Kennedy, although Ted Kennedy probably should have been on a terror watch list. Ted Kennedy, late senator who, thank God, he's dead now, he was on that list. And this guy was one of the most powerful senators in the, in, well, not in the world, in the country. And this guy was on the, the, the no-fly list. So you tell me if it's an accurate list. You tell me if you trust who and why people are put on this list. I don't, but that's what this thing does. They're bringing that one back up again. That was under the Obama administration they put. I'm surprised they didn't push that one through. The next one, oh, by the way, this guy, this killer in Vegas, wouldn't have changed anything. The guy had not committed any crimes, was on no possible list like that. I actually, you can go and check and see if a name is on the no-fly list. His name's not on it. This wouldn't have changed anything. So reintroducing this bill on October the 10th of this year does nothing. But they're trying to push this bill through because there's a motion going on right now with this Las Vegas shooting. Very deceitful people. These people are definitely, they're, they're bottom of the barrel. They're scum of the earth. The next one, we've talked about this. We put a video out on it, uh, HR 3999. We're going to name it the same as we did that first bill that did the same thing as far as, well, again, what we call it, the Semi-Automatic Rifle Abatement Act. Basically, it's, it's, it's painted under the guise of being a bump stock act because that's the evil thing right now is bump stocks. But it's really any way to increase the rate of fire on a semi-automatic rifle, which in essence and by default is going to go straight at semi-automatic rifles and prohibit us from purchasing them. And again, that wouldn't have changed anything in Las Vegas because again, I'm gonna have to repeat this, if this guy had not had, if he had not had a bump fire stock, he would have been more accurate and he would have killed more people shooting a gun with controlled recoil and controlled follow-up shots. Thankfully, he used a bump fire stock. I'm sorry, I know that's hard to hear, but thankfully, because we would have had a higher body count. Thank God we had a lower body count. And he only killed, I know it sounds horrible, but he only killed the 59 people. 
That's because this bump fire stock is not an effective tool as much as everybody out there online wants to say, oh, it's, it's prey, it's bull. It's not spray and pray. That's not what it is. Controlled rates of fire always result in more hit targets. It's a fact. It's physics. It's math. It's all those things combined. HR 4018. All right, what do the Democrats call this one? Okay, uh, da, 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 da. I don't think they have a cushy name for this one. Hmm, I don't know why they don't have a cushy name for it. Basically what it does though, their um, bill would provide for a three day waiting period before a person may receive a handgun with exceptions. Don't even bother with the exceptions. Those don't apply to you and I, they just don't. So it's to provide a three day waiting period before a person may receive a handgun. What I'm going to rename it as, make law-abiding citizens felons if they loan a gun to a friend without making them wait three days. Because that's what it does. It is not just for making the whole country wait three days to buy a handgun. It's if you and I want to loan, sell, let someone borrow a handgun of ours. If we do not wait three days to do that, you know what that means is? This is a backdoor way to have what they like to call universal background checks, which the, the code word for universal background checks, what it actually means is, it means eliminate private sales. This is simply an, an, an act to try to eliminate private sales. It even goes into detail that you could loan, you could loan this to a parent, child, sibling, grandparent, or a grandchild. Guess what it doesn't allow you to do? You can't loan, now that says loan, not sell. You can't sell that, you can't sell these guns to your kids, your parent, child, sibling, grandparent, or grandchild. You can't sell it. You still have to wait the three days. And again, we're going into registration at that point, which in, in essence makes universal background checks eliminating private sales. But it does not allow you to loan, to loan a gun. Would that have stopped a Las Vegas shooting? HR4025. This one is called, and eh, this one doesn't have too horrible of a name. It's cited as the Multiple Firearm Sales Reporting Modera <laughs> Modernization Act of 2017. So stupid. Uh, it's basically a requirement that federal firearms licensees report sales of two or more handguns to the same unlicensed person within five consecutive business days. What I'm going to rename this one as, assume all lighted, excuse me, assume all law-abiding gun owners are mass murderers if they buy two guns at once act. Because it's basically saying that we assume you may be doing something um, nefarious, deadly, evil, whatever, if you're buying two or more firearms at the exact same time within a five-day period of time. Would that have stopped the Las Vegas shooting? just like the last bill wouldn't have because the three-day waiting period meant nothing to this guy. He started buying his guns months ago. Same thing here. Same thing here. This guy, if he bought his guns months ago, he could have bought one gun every six days. Now, with me saying that, you know what the politicians are thinking? Yeah, let's pass this one saying every five days, and when the next mass murderer buys guns every 10 days, we can say, See, our bill needs to be strengthened because five days wasn't enough. Let's make it 30 now. That's the slippery slope everybody keeps talking about. That's why you don't give an inch. HR 4052. Oh my gosh, wait till you hear the title of this one. It's cited as, here you go, you, I, I'm gonna have to put this on the screen. The Keep Americans Safe Act. The Keep, Amer Keep Americans Safe Act. What I'm going to call this is make felons out of law-abiding gun owners who possess standard capacity magazines. You know what I'm going at. 30 round mags, they only want you to have 10 round mags. They don't want you to have 11 round mags. They don't want you to have 15 round mags. They don't want you to have 30 round mags or 60 or 100, let alone 200. It's just not gonna happen. Okay, I got one question. What do I do with this? Because this box is capable of holding Actually, wherever it is, uh, I don't see it. Here it is. This box for this firearm is capable of holding 200 rounds. So what does that do? Take them out of the box? Now they hang loosely? 
So now I can hang 500 rounds. So does that make this gun illegal? Because now magazines aren't really magazines are necessary for this thing. You can use a 30 round mag with this. But what does it do? What does it do for belt fed guns like that's not a full auto, by the way. It's a perfectly legal gun for anyone to go out and purchase with simply filling out a 4473 and walk out the store with it, just like I did with this gun. It makes felons out of everybody who purchases a 30 round magazine or anything bigger than 10 rounds. Stupid. Now I know what you're thinking. With the high rate of fire that the Las Vegas shooter was shooting at, would HR 4052 Keep Americans Safe Act? Would that have changed anything? No. No. Because at the rate of fire you heard this guy shooting, he clearly had experience with his bump fire stock or else he could not have worked it like that. Bump fire stocks are not that easy and that intuitive to be able to bang out shots like that unless you have had a lot of practice with it. If he's had that much practice and I saw 30 round magazines in there and I think some uh, Surefire or whatever they're called, uh, uh, maybe Surefeed, 60 round magazines in there, the, the longer extended magazine. Um, you know, this guy clearly had some experience and he was changing out magazines. You're 32 floors up. There's nobody outside your door. There's nobody shooting back at you. What if it would have taken him a couple of more minutes? Not even minutes. Now, I mean, come on, to change a magazine, we're talking about seconds here. Seconds. If it would have taken him an extra five seconds per magazine to change it out, put another one in, you saw the video. People are running a little bit, but most of the people are staying in place. They're not going anywhere. This guy would have done the same amount of damage. Again, if you would have had taken his bump fire from him, he'd have done more damage. It would not have stopped the mass murder in Las Vegas. It simply would not have stopped it. So no on that one as well. So, I mean, we're over for whatever right now, however many bills have gone over. HR 4057. The mushy name for this one is Denying Firearms and Explosives to Dangerous Terrorists Act of 2017. Wow, makes me want to vote against that or for that one, right? I want to keep dangerous firearms and explosives away from dangerous terrorists, right? Don't you want to? Same thing as the other one we talked about. It's the no-fly list. It has nothing to do with terrorists. It's a no-fly list that is accidentally thrown together. There are some names that belong on there and the rest of them are pure accident. A pure hunch. You could report somebody and put them on there. I could report my neighbor and say that this guy looks like a terrorist or whatever. He could wind up on the list. There's not an official way to report that, but you could definitely go to authorities and get your neighbor thrown on that list. All that is, is again, I'm going to repeat the same thing that I said earlier. Screw due process and prevent innocent law-abiding citizens from buying guns based on unfounded hunches act. That's what it does. And guess what? Again, just like I did earlier, that does not prevent the Las Vegas shooting. Simply doesn't do it. Okay, we're in the Senate now. And was that a Senate or an HR? That was a House bill. We're in the Senate now. This is S-1915, what they're calling. This one is the Handgun Trigger Safety Act of 2017. Not very mushy worded there. They may need some help in the Senate. Somebody get a little wordsmith in there to help them word these things to tug on some emotions a little bit better because that one just doesn't do it for me. The Handgun Trigger Safety Act of 2017. It's kind of lost on me, you know, and I'm not feeling like I need to curl up next to a fire to read that one. What I'm calling it is endanger citizens by making it cumbersome and difficult to protect themselves and their families act because that's what this one does. What this one basically does is, and it's, I'll go again, my, my individual video on this particular one, you're going to hear a lot from me because this one I want to go over quite sometimes, quite a bit on it. Um, this one here is basically a smart gun act. And it's got a lot of junk in it. I'm going to see if I can't find some of my notes because I did make some notes. I'm looking at junk. I'm looking at garbage. This is something that caught my eye. Beginning on the date that is 10 years after the date of enactment of this act, no person may distribute in commerce any handgun that is not a personalized handgun or a retrofitted personalized handgun. What that means is once this bill is passed, if it were to pass, 10 years after the bill is passed, you can no longer sell, trade, give, anything, a gun that does that is not a smart gun. Think of the millions of guns, millions. Now, granted, they're going to have an exception for relics, like an M1 Garand, the old guns, uh, things like that. They're, they're going to have exceptions for that. And of course, the government and the uh, uh, local governments and military, police forces, they, it doesn't apply to them too. But again, after 10 years, you and I can no longer 
trade, sell, give away, um, inherit any gun that is not a smart gun. What does that do? You know what it does? I know what you're thinking. I'm not getting, getting rid of my guns. <laughs> if my gun doesn't, is not a smart gun and in 10 years I want to give it to my son or if I, my, my dad dies and I want to inherit all these guns, I'm taking them. That's fine. You know what it does? It makes us felons. It makes us felons. And then they take all of our guns from us. You see where all this is going? These are the slippery slopes that we keep talking about. These are the slippery slopes. Now, the stupid thing is, in some cases, they actually apply some of these using some of their wording in here as why. These are their findings that support why they wanted to do this. This one blew my mind here. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, 24 law enforcement officers were killed with their own weapons between 2006 and 2015. So you mean to tell me that you're going to make law enforcement officers carry a smart gun that is either going to have to have their fingerprint on there, a bracelet with a biometric chip that talks to the gun when it gets in close proximity to it, or whatever. You mean to tell me it's bad enough you're stupid enough to think that us private citizens, in order to protect ourselves, you're going to expect us to have all that. But you're going to expect a guy that goes out there and has his tool on him, his pistol on him, for personal protection and our protection, you're going to expect him to have a smart gun on him? Your stupidity, your stupidity is growing by leaps and bounds if you think this kind of thing happens. Now, would that have stopped the Las Vegas shooting? Come on, man. If he had to have smart guns, did the guy care? The guy was a millionaire. The guy could afford all these guns. So what if there would have been smart guns up there? Big deal. He still would have shot them. And look, they say you're not a criminal until you're a criminal. This guy's a mass murderer. He knew what he was going to do. Who's to say he didn't go buy all those guns off the black market or steal all of them? Because he was going to commit a mass murder. It wasn't like he was afraid of breaking the law. No, that one wouldn't have helped either. Okay, Senate Bill 1916. They call this one the Automatic Gunfire Prevention Act. It's the same one we talked about about the other two. I'm going to rename this the Semi-Automatic Rifle Abatement Act because in essence what they want to do is get to all of our semi-automatic rifles. They kind of say it in the bill. S-1923. Okay, this one, the cushy name is Background Check Completion Act of 2017. Okay, there's an implication by this wording that the background check process is incomplete. They say they want to complete it. This isn't what you're thinking. This isn't even the, uh, um, the universal background check thing, the universal background check. This isn't the elimination of private gun sales as they want to do. This is simply to prohibit firearm dealers from selling a firearm prior to the completion of a background check. That's already law. That's already a law. So I named this Background Checks Already Exist Act, because this is stupid. This one won't pass. This is stupid. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of paper. And it's only one page long. I guess two if you want to count the pages I printed, but it's really only one page long. These are people that really don't have anything better to do, guys. All the crap that's wrong with our country, and these people are trying to pass laws that already exist. They're stupid. They're really stupid. I'm telling you, these people are stupid. They may be good in the field that they were in prior to getting in Washington, D.C. They're stupid in terms of passing laws that apply to all of us law-abiding Americans. This blows my mind. Last one I have, S. 1939. This one sounds good. Equal access to justice for victims of gun violence act. The same thing we heard earlier, right? What this is, and I will rename it for you, the Allow Unaccountable Idiots to Sue Gun Companies for No Reason Act. Because that's all it does. More people wanting to sue gun companies. Again, like I said earlier, that would not have prevented the Las Vegas shooting unless for some reason every single uh, gun manufacturer and ammo manufacturer had been previously sued, put out of business, but then all of those guns and ammo still existed. So it wouldn't have changed a thing. I have a stack of trees right here that died for no reason because none of these bills are worth the paper that it's written on. None of these bills, even though they all came out between October 4th and October 10th, 
every one of them between October 4th and October 10th, immediately after, weeks after, or days after the Las Vegas shooting, strictly based on emotion. Every one of these, and not one of them is worth passing, talking about, or would have prevented the Las Vegas shooting. So you're telling me that the Las Vegas shooting prompted all these bills to be written, but not a single one of them would have prevented the shooting. What's the point? What is the point? It's because all of this stuff is prepackaged and prepared for any time something like this happens. They can yank it out of their filing cabinet, throw it on the table and say, we got a new bill that's going to make America safe. Bull crap.